إلا أحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلوا به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله جل وعلا for indeed the best speech is the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وحال الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم the best guidance is the guidance of our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَشَرَ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the words of all affairs are the newly invented matters. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ دَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ For indeed, every newly invented matter is an innovation, and every innovation is misguidance and leads in the fire. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the fire of hell. Amen. أرحب بكم جميعا أيها الأحبة وأرجو أن تكونوا جميعا بخير وفي صحة وعافية أنتم وذويكم ومن تحبون Once again I welcome all of you and I hope that you are all well those who are in Australia and those who are following to the telegram I hope that you are all well your loved ones, your family members may Allah preserve you and protect you and all of us Amen Inshallah we continue reading from the explanation of the creed Sharh al-Sunnah from uh, the book Ithaf al-Qari of our noble Shaykh al-Allama al-Dr. Salih bin Fouzan al-Fouzan Hafizahullah ta'ala wa matta'ahu bis-sahha wa al-afiyya may Allah preserve him give him a good health, Amin and all of us Qala al-Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah in this point number 49 wa la yahillu damu mri'in muslimin يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ويشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إلا بإحدى ثلاث زنا بعد إحصان أو مرتد بعد إيمان أو قتل نفسا مؤمنا مؤمنة بغير حق فليقتل به وما سوى ذلك فدم المسلم على المسلم حرام أبدا حتى تقوم الساعة this point here, number 49, that Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the blood of a Muslim who testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, وسلم, the blood of such a person is not lawful to be shed, except in any of these three instances adultery after chastity apostasy after iman faith or taking the life of a believer unjustly and being killed for it other than this he says the blood of a muslim to another muslim is inviolable till the hour is established till the hour is established in the explanation, our noble Sheikh al Alam al Dr. Salih al Fawzan, may Allah preserve him and all of our noble scholars and whoever call to the Deen of Allah upon Basira, upon knowledge, and upon insight, following what the Prophet Sallallahu was upon his companions. Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, he says, the author here, which is Imam Barbahari, rahimahullah, brought this issue of killing a Muslim after the issue of marriage because Islam 
came with the protection of honor, blood, and property. Because the previous point was about marriage and divorce. He said, so he brought this matter here, the issue of killing a Muslim, after the issue of marriage. He says, because Islam came with the protection of honor, blood, and property. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالَكُمْ وَأَعْرَادَكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ حَرَامٌ Prophet ﷺ says, Indeed your blood, your property, and honor are inviolable to you. And this hadith is reported by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, hadith number 67. And also Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala in his Sahih, Hayat number 1679, 1679. From the hadith of Abu Bakr, not Abu Bakr Siddiq, Abu Bakr Siddiq, Also the Prophet sallallahu said, Kullu Everything belonging to a Muslim is inviolable for a Muslim, his honor, his blood, and property. <clears throat> and this hadith here is reported by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his Sahih, hadith number 2564, on the authority of the noble companion Abu Huraira, radiallahu an. <coughs> After bringing these two narrations, Sheikh Saleh al Bawzan, Allah Ta'ala, he went to say, So when Imam Barbahari, Allah Ta'ala, discussed about honor in the previous sentences and the previous points, 47 and 48, regarding marriage and divorce, then he moves to the issue of blood. So he said, if a Muslim, this is very important to understand, you got to pay attention to this text, because the Khawarij now, they're killing Muslims and non-Muslims, and more Muslims than non-Muslims, in a matter of fact, and they think it's okay. Here he says, if a Muslim testifies that none deserves to be worshipped, except Allah, and that Muhammad Wasallam is the messenger of Allah, his blood and property becomes inviolable. Now you find the Khawarij, they go and blow up a masjid. People are praying. They say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Adhan, Iqama, in the Tashahud. They didn't care. They said, No, they are not Muslims. Allahu Musta'ala. The Prophet said, Umirtu an uqatil an nasa hatta yaqulu, La ilaha illallah. Fa idha qaluha, عصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحق الإسلام وحسابهم على الله تعالى. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I have been commanded to fight the people, the mushrikeen, and the disbelievers and the mushrikeen. He said, I have been commanded to fight people until they say, لا إله إلا الله. None has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. If they say so, their blood and property is protected from me, except when justified by law of Islam. And their reckoning is with Allah the Most High. This hadith here <coughs> is reported by Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, in his Sahih, hadith number 25. 25. And also by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, in his Sahih, hadith number 22. From the hadith of the noble companion Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, and his father, Umar ibn Khattab. So, Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, he says, So, whoever proclaims Islam and utters the testimonies of faith, okay? We will accept it from him and will consider him to be a Muslim and the rulings regarding the Muslims would be applicable to him. But if there is hypocrisy in his heart, 
Such is between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know what's in the hearts. Allah will call him to account in Yom al -Qiyam. That's why Allah, the Prophet says, and their reckoning is with Allah, the Most High on Yom al -Qiyamah. If they have any hypocrisy in their hearts. The Prophet وسلم, accepted the Islam of the hypocrites. Remember that. There was hypocrites in the time of the Prophet The Prophet وسلم, accepted the Islam of the hypocrites and applied apparent rulings upon them. However, Shaykh Salih al Taala says, whoever commits one of the nullifiers of Islam, we are required to judge him as being an apostate. Okay? An apostate, murtad. If he repents, alhamdulillah, that's good for him, it's better. Otherwise, he should be killed as a defense for the religion and who should carry these capital punishments? He's the ruler. Not anybody. This is not for the layman people, for the common folks. No, this is a mistake. This is only for the ruler, this capital. They, they bring the person and they ask him questions and they make sure where he at and if he has any doubts, they bring people of knowledge to clear out those doubts for him. It's, it's a process. It's not just like you hear like, oh, beheading and just like that. They not somebody out of the market and, and kill him. No, it's a, big, it's a long process that people don't know because this is the beauty of Islam. And this is the first thing that legalized the blood of a Muslim, okay, the apostasy. apostasy. He said, the second thing that legalized the blood of a Muslim is law of equality in punishment of life for life. Like you heard, the eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and life for life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 178, verses 178 and 179. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم القصاص في القتل الحر بالحر والعبد بالعبد والأنثى بالأنثى فمن عفي له من أخيه شيء فاتباع بالمعروف وأداء إليه بإحسان ذلك تخفيف من ربكم ورحمة فمن اعتدى بعد ذلك فله عذاب أليم so the translation of these two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah in English O you who believe Al-Qisas the law of equality in punishment is prescribed for you in case of murder is prescribed for you in case of murder meaning legal retaliation so, so therefore, a free for a free, a slave for a slave, a female for a female. But if the killer is forgiven by the brother or the relative, etc., of the one who's been killed, yani by the relative of the killed against blood money, because he they accepted the blood money instead, then adhering to it with fairness and payment of the blood money, to the ear should be made in fairness. This is an alleviation and immersy from your law. So after this, whoever transgresses the limits, meaning, i.e. kills the killer after taking the blood money, he shall have a painful torment. And there is a saving of life for you in Al-Qisas. Actually, so there is a saving of life for you in al qisas the law of equality and punishment, O oh, man of understanding. So Sheikh Saleh al fawzan Allah Ta'ala says, al qisas begets life in spite of the fact that he was killed. al qisas begets life in spite of the fact that the person was killed. And this is, he says, because if the murderer, if the murderer knows that he would be killed, he will refrain from killing. He will refrain from killing. 
And if people see the murderer, the murderer being killed and the capital punishment applied on him or her, they will also refrain from killing others. So with this, bloodshed would be prevented. And this is, uh, this is the beauty of Islam. In society that they apply, that's why, look, the society that apply Islam correctly, they are the best society. That's why the Sahaba, they were the best. Why? Because they applied Islam in every bit of their lives. Unlike now, may Allah have mercy on us, how much of Islam we do apply and how much we don't. Hmm? In this point here, we'll give you an example. Saudi Arabia, may Allah preserve it, and all the Muslim countries, but they are the one that applies these rules and regulations of Islam. They go by the Quran and the Sunnah, Jazakumullah khairan. But nobody is perfect, of course. But they are the best amongst all the countries that they say they are Muslim countries, but they don't apply the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, but they have some man-made laws. They have man-made laws that they uh, refer to and, and go back to. In Saudi Arabia, they apply this. If somebody steal and then there is a proof against that person, like I said, not anybody who steal, they like come here, chop him. Somebody is like just running in a marketplace in the street with a, with a blade and cutting people's hands. No, it doesn't work like that. They bring him into the judge and the judge will look and listen to him and find out why did he steal? Does he have any valid reason for stealing this and that? And then if he is guilty, then they will cut his hand. And now if you go to Saudi Arabia, you, you don't show, it, you may not even see one person that his hand is cut off. Why? Because the people, they know if they do that, that's what's going to happen to them. Likewise, if the society applies these guidelines of Islam, that they came to us from the all-merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-kind and merciful, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, who wants good for his slaves, you will see nothing but good, alhamdulillah, and justice and ease and in, in, in amongst the people. But now, when, when they don't apply these rules and regulations, and now somebody kill, not even one, kill like a dozen people, and then what's going to happen? They try to find excuses for him. Oh, maybe he has a bad day. Oh, let's look at his anybody in his family who who has any he, any, any history of of whatever mental problems. This and that. Then they put him in jail, and he eats, and he has coverage, health coverage. Some even they 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 present protection for them because they say they don't want them to be oppressed or killed in jail. And then three years later, five years later. Still, they drag in the, the, and then some of them, they even don't even get caught. Some of them, that for whatever reason, they just get three to five years, and they come out and do the same thing again. Allah understand. See here, this is very, he says, Al-Qisas begets life in spite of the fact that a person is killed, meaning the murderer is killed. How we understand this, Sheikh Saleh al fawzan that's why we need the ulama, ikhwan. How many of us will read this ayah, but how are we going to understand it? The Sheikh says, look, this is because if the murderer, the murderer knows that he would be killed, he will refrain from killing. And if people see the murderer being killed, they will also refrain from killing. So with this, bloodshed would be prevented. So a lot of people, they kill because they're angry. They kill because of hate. They hate somebody because of their color. They already hate them anyway. They hate them for years. And as soon as they have, like, they're going to shoot him or stab him and kill him over a parking spot. You see, over a parking spot, he's going to kill him. Allah must time. Because these the hates. It's not because of the parking spot, no. It's because of the hate they have 
for years harboring it. But if that person lives in a society, a Muslim society that applies the laws of Islam, and he knows that if he kills somebody, man, he's going to be killed, he, he, he's going to find another way. He's going to go home and fix him a coffee or a tea and sit down. All right? Sheikh Fawzan says, Al-Qisas is a means of saving life, even if the person, even if the person guilty is killed. He said, even if the person guilty is killed, in it, it is a killing that leads to sparing the life of the remaining members of the society, and it will reduce transgression on blood but to leave the murderer and say this is an this is inconsistent with human rights and he is left without being killed such will beget shedding of blood disturbance of security and frightening of the secured ones it will also beget great corruption and increased killing and bloodshed in fact, during the days of ignorance, they used to say killing is beneficial to the killed. Killing a, killing a wrongdoer is beneficial to the killed in future. I know. But, but those people who, subhanAllah, they kill somebody and then trials take years and mashallah, he's eating three meals, three hearts and a cat like they say, got full health coverage and he's chilling and playing basketball he has a gym yes and even when they they sentence him like 20 years to life whatever this and that and he's just eating and and others people they're like hey so what's the what's, what's the worst thing's gonna happen to him he's gonna be in there he's fed he doesn't have to worry about getting a job and this and that I remember a brother told me a story. He says that uh, some Muslim, a Muslim from a Muslim country, from from the Gulf, from the Arabian Peninsula, from the Gulf, he, he was studying in Europe. And then there was this Jew teacher, he was teaching them one of these uh, subject matters, and he was racist. Because he knew he was a Muslim and he used to to say bad comments about Islam, the laws of Islam, and this and that, okay? So, but the, but the, but the, the student was very wise. He didn't let that get into him. He's like, look, that's an ignorant person. I don't care. He's my teacher. I'm just going to, like, be patient until I get my grade, and then I'm not going to see him again, okay? And then he always makes fun. He's like, oh, look at this. In Muslim laws, they... Uh, uh, they 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 they, uh, they, uh, they 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 cut the hands of somebody who steal and this and that and this. After a couple of months go by, the, the that same teacher came uh, came mad, yani, and he was uh, angry. And somebody asked him. Somebody asked him. Says, "Teacher, what happened? Is it like something happened?" He said, "Yeah, man. I I my car broke down and uh, and I took the." Subway and somebody yeah, and he stole my wallet and I have all my paper in it and my cards and this and, and this. Then the, 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 the student, the Muslim student said, what would you do if you catch him? He said, I would kill him. <laughs> then the student said to him, the Muslim student said, what? You want to kill him? You are making fun of, of the law of Islam, Islam says you cut only the hand. So you want to kill the, the person for stealing from you? So who, who, who is the oppressor here now? Allah Musta'an. The Sheikh Fawzan says there is a verse of the Quran in regard to this, okay? To what he was saying, the Qisas. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says <coughs> in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِسَاسِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Ayah 179. And there is a saving of life for you in Al-Qisas, in the law of equality, in punishment and legal retribution, retaliation, O man of understanding. So Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, he wanted to say, as for those who claim that Al-Qisas 
is consist is uh, is inconsistent with human rights said so we say to them we say to them is the one harm not a human being so that retaliating for him contains protection of this of his right no tell them the same thing Oh, you care only about the one who's still alive? What about the one who's been killed and murdered? He has no rights? He has no rights? No rights only for the one who did the bad thing? The third of category of those who, whose blood is lawful to shed is a thayyib, a thayyib who commits illegal sexual intercourse. And what is a thayyib? Thayyab. A thayyib not thobe, don't mix it with the thobe, okay? Thobe is a garment, okay? Or thawab, thawab, which is reward. No, thayyib. A thayyib is a person that had, that has had intercourse with his wife inside a valid marriage. He has a consummated marriage. He got married and he has consummated the marriage. If such a person commits illegal sexual intercourse, he would be pelted with stones Till he dies, and his blood is legal with this. And of once again, it's not a group of people in the community is going to take someone in a dark alley and do this. No, 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 no. It's not. Okay, this is for the ruler, the supreme ruler, or whoever he represents him. They're the one that carry out these punishments. Okay, remember that all time. There is no khawarij in Islam. Okay. <clears throat> He says, so, so these are the matters, the three matters that make it legal to shed the blood of a Muslim. It is either al-qisas, of life for life, adultery after chastity, or an apostate that commits one of the nullifiers of Islam. The Prophet says, Man Whoever changes his religion, kill him. And this is once again for the rulers, not for the common people. And the hadith collected by Imam al Bukhari in his Sahih, Hayat number 2854, mm -hmm. from Ikrima, who said that some heretics, and uh, give you the reason, you know, some heretics were brought to Ali radiallahu anhu and he burned them. This news got to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who said, If it had been I, I would not have burned them. Because of the messengers of Allah's Hassan prohibition, do not punish with the Allah's punishment. I would have killed them because of the Prophet saying, whoever changed his religion, kill him. And also in the other hadith, the Prophet he says, Also a man who abandons his religion and departs from the Jama'a, from the Muslims. It's reported by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, hadith number 6484, and Imam Muslim in his Sahih, Hadith number 1676, from the Hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, says, we conclude with this. This Hadith contains refutation to those who object to the punishment of apostasy using this saying of Allah as proof. La ikraha fi din from a part of the verse 256 in Surah Al-Baqarah. There is no compulsion in the religion. The Sheikh said this is wrong deduction. This is a wrong deduction because the aim of killing an apostate is not compulsion in the religion. Rather, the aim is <coughs> preservation and protection of the religion from the trickery of one who enters it by choice, then abandons it after he had testified that the religion is true. And now, if he does that, other people are going to do it, and then it's going to be chaos in the community and the society. This is to, to protect the religion and to protect the Muslims. As for his saying, the saying of Imam al-Bahari, the blood of a Muslim that testifies that there is no other deity except, all, except, except Allah, he said, a Muslim is the one who testifies that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. He said, however, action is essential along with these two testimonies of faith, such as establishing the prayers, giving the zakat, observing fasting in the month of Ramadan, and performing the pilgrimage to the house of Allah if one is able. 
actions is essential. You don't just say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and do whatever you want to do. No salat, no zakat, no fasting, no. As for his statements, statement of Imam Barbahari, other than this, the blood of a Muslim is inviolable to another Muslim till the hour is established. He says, no, the blood of a Muslim is haram. It's forbidden, inviolable to another Muslim. Never will the blood of a Muslim be legal except if he transgresses against people in their houses, for example. He break into people's houses and threaten them and, and he got killed in the process. Yes, that's permissible. If he becomes a highway robber and he got killed in, 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 or revolts against the one in authority, somebody who revolts against the ruler and got killed, and so on. Such a person should be killed to prevent his evil, if his evil cannot be prevented except by killing him. Uh, there is a, like I said, this is alhamdulillah, Islam is beautiful and great religion, but you have to study it in details. Those who are, that are executed or this capital punishments applied on them, this is not by few people in the streets that they take somebody to some remote area or dark alley or some abandoned from such a thing. Inshallah, we stop here. We'll continue next time. Bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakumullah fikum. Muhafidakumullah. I hope you are all well and your loved ones, your family members, anyone who's sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them, those who died upon Islam, Tawheed, Sunnah, may Allah forgive them their sins and raise them many levels. Anyone who's going through any hardship, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open doors for them and help them and assist them. Those, those who are oppressed, whenever they may be, and the Muslims, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them and protect them. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi. وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا